Hey guys, it's Pineapple, and we're here to talk about My Hero Academia Season 4's trailer. There's a new trailer that's here. It's technically a full trailer. It's not just that teaser that we've gotten already. So we're going to get straight to that after that intro hits, if I can find it on this thing. And I see it there, so let's get it. There's the intro. Hit it! It lagged. <laughs> I don't think we're doing the intro. All right, let's get to it. My Hero Academia Season 4. Uh, we got this trailer right here. Let's get all my OBS stuff out of the way. Now, for obvious reasons, I think we could all understand, I will definitely not be playing this entire trailer just by itself. Like, hey, you know, it's just, it's just playing. No, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be kind of breaking it down, you know, going through it piece by piece. You can watch the full trailer in my description. I'm going to link the original source, which is Toho Animation. You can go, I, I believe it's Toho Animation that they're the first ones that posted it. Um, you can go over to their page and watch the entire trailer real quick before we get started here. I'm, I am kind of bummed out about the the intro not working. That That's kind of something, but you know, it's, it's whatever. So right away, all right. Confirmation, Toho Animation. So I'm assuming you clicked off real quick to go watch the trailer. Welcome back. It was he, right? Let's, let's get to it. So, Japanese text that I don't understand, but it's orange, which matches my pineapple vibe, so I like it. Okay. So right away, we start off with the scene um, where... Ooh, this is going to be... I'm realizing that there, I, I'm going to be very careful for people that don't, haven't... You know, obviously, if you're watching this trailer, it's because you are excited for next season and you don't know what's going to happen. So I'll make sure that I... I, uh, I'll, I'll save a little bit of this on the on the end for spoiler talk, I guess. But, you know, this is a scene here. We have All Might and Deku talking. There's... There's... I mean, look. Right away, right? The first thing that we're starting off on is, like... All Might's back after the events of Season 3, right? The first thing we see. After the events of Season 3, when All Might is no longer this grand hero that we're all looking forward to seeing flying in the scenes and beating people up, it's a, it's a whole new world, right? This is not the season like every other season past where we're going to see All Might step in, punch a skyscraper, or, you know, cause a tornado with his fist. That's done. That's very much done with the events of My Hero Academia Season 3. So now we're seeing All Might in his, you know, it's not his hero costume, it's his jogging outfit. But, you know, it's styled like an All Might branded hero costume, right? I'm sure it's like custom for him. So we see All Might in this jogging costume that also is his hero costume. And it's kind of like seeing, it's kind of like seeing the hero All Might return to sort of like everyday life. And Deku's seeing it here too, right? Like Deku is seeing that here we have All Might in his hero outfit in a way, right? But it's as a civilian. He's also in a civilian outfit. And it shows you where All Might has gone, right? The first, that, That's what I really like about this being the first shot, right? The first thing that we see from this trailer is the aftermath of My Hero Academia Season 3 and what happens of All Might. And we see how Deku takes it. And then, right after that, and this, is, this scene has a whole different meaning when you actually keep in context what's going on in the, like this scene i've made a whole entire video because of this interaction but we'll, we'll talk about what goes on between these two characters what they're talking about and like what what has deku sweating and so shook because deku ran here to talk to all might about something rather important but we haven't started you know talking about season four yet so just stay tuned for that uh, i will say deku does uh, a thing that i do notice here is we did get news about the new uh, chief animation director on new staff and stuff and a few of the characters do look a little different in this trailer but all the things that i look for to judge the quality of the uh judge the quality of the animation just based off of the trailer perspective are there the shading is great um it's there's like this really nice gradient shading that they use uh for the for my hero stuff when it's like you know looking as good as i like to look uh, just the in-between frames, uh, the hair movement, there's, like, certain things that I look for that, and, you know, Deku's not looking weird here, even though he doesn't look, um, a thousand percent, also, he does, he's making, like, a weird face, right, even though he doesn't look a thousand percent like you would expect him to look if it was, like, Umakoshi, uh, chief directoring it, this still looks great to me, right, like, this st is still looking, like, premium, the lines have varying thickness and, and stuff, sorry, I almost had the, <laughs> that was the cough, that was, ooh. All right, so let's get... So the first thing that we see after this, right, is this purple, and this is like the League of Villains uh, color template. We see where we're getting into, right? Like, we go from seeing... Let's have a play for a second. We go from seeing these two to, uh-oh, 
yeah, there's a problem. All Might is gone. Deku is scared, right? He's seeing what's going on with All Might. And now there's the darkness of the heroes uh, of the hero. Look, we're even cutting into twice and everything. There's this League of Villains shadow cast over the land, right? Like this, this is the era. And also in the manga, this is the very beginning of the rise of the villain saga, right? Like All Might and all that stuff going on was, that was... It's the end of when the heroes have this super dominance over the villains, right? Like, now the villains are going to start rising up. So here we have the fall of the heroes and the rise of the villains. We're going to see that. So twice. Ooh, we're going to get into some of that real quick. All right, so we see some people running away. We pretty much saw this while twice was running, uh, roaming through the city, picking up some of the uh, Liberation Army members. This, I'm sure, is that one rowdy group. This I don't actually recall, but look at that. Look at that animation. That That's good. That's good to see that. This I actually don't recall, to be quite honest. But why does this look so good? Right? I, I don't remember. The, remind me about this scene. I don't remember this, this big tongue out quirk user fighting a big naked dude in the street. But... Look at the animation on the shockwave that happens on the ground. And even if you just see the animation of them fighting or the police officer, this looks like a pretty highly animated scene. So I wonder uh, if this scene here, like what, what it's going to add to the season. Because I don't remember this large scale battle between, uh, you know, two, I would assume, villains going on. I don't, I don't remember this at all. But remind me if I'm just like nuts and I'm not remembering it. Look at that. You see the spit coming on? Ah! <laughs> well, I don't I don't recognize this scene. I feel like I'm so lost. The spit animations. I well, I, I guess if they're animating scenes like this super well where it's just kind of like <laughs> it's Titan form Aaron uh fighting, you know, Reptar, Reptar's nephew. Uh if they're going to be animating the crap out of scenes like this, then I I think we can all assume. Look at that. I think we can all assume that it's going to be well animated this season, right? Like, it's already looking really good for me. But I think we can all assume that if stuff like this is getting animated like that, that looks really nice. Then scenes where our actual characters are stunting and fighting against uh, different villains are going to look great. Sorry. <clears throat> so. Mirio. So we got Mirio pulling up. I always thought this screenshot looked... And pause this. I always thought this screenshot looked weird to me, to be quite honest. Uh, his face just looks weird to me here. Maybe it's his face in conjunction, uh, in conjunction with his hair. But I, it's whatever, right? That's not really the problem. Once again, the line art looks great. Uh, you know, composited well. I keep right-clicking by accident. So we got Mirio. I'm trying not to play this consecutively so I don't get clean. All right. So some of this is stuff from last season, right? Like this, I believe... I don't know if we saw this last season, but I know that we did see this in the last trailer, right? But here we have Bakugo using AP shot from last season. Uh, so they are showing us some clips from last season. But look. Ooh, look at the, uh, those effects. But look at my boy, Todoroki. Now, look, once again, you see what we're talking about? This is great, right? Th I, I wonder what the context of this shot is going to be, right? But this is great. And... But we do have a little bit, you can see it, there's a little bit of a different look, right? Like, there's a little bit of a different look here in this shot to Todoroki. The shot kind of looks a little unfinished, uh, but I feel like that's just because, again, the line work is, it's really thin in this uh, in this shot, right? Like, we're used to seeing Todoroki with some really thick lines. Uh, if you really look back, he has a lot of moments where he gets a lot of, uh, a lot of shading, a lot of thick lines. But he also has moments where it's it's really thin like this. So I, I know this, if you don't really care about this kind of stuff, I, I'm ruining this trailer for you. But I did, you know, I did provide the link so you can watch it yourself. Um, but yeah, so we have Todoroki training his ice, training his fire. That is going to be useful for arc that is coming up. Bakugo and Todoroki are going to be back in the story a little bit this season, but definitely a lot more next season. So Deku. Ooh, there we go. So look at the, some of those lines. Thick, the thin, we got Deku. Now look, Deku once again, looking a little different here, but I, I don't have any complaints. I think it looks great. I think this looks fantastic. Deku is resolved. This might, ooh, ooh, some hand action. This might be some thumbnail art right here, to be honest. This looks great. His eyes look fantastic. I mean, this season is really shaping out to be something. And also keep in mind, this season is like one of the darker seasons, right? This season we're getting into, into some of the content. We're getting into some of the real hero stuff. So here we have Deku. 
Once again, this is probably going to be the standard of animation here. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just, I'm being a nerd about the animation because we were so worried about how the animation was going to look uh, with the movie coming out. Like, you know, pretty much at around so the same time, I would imagine. Look at that. Look at that. This shot right here. Oh, this gave me a lot of faith because I was a little worried when I saw this here, right? A little worried. Uh, Deku looks a little weird here, but sure, the shading looks great. But then when we get here... Oh, this, this looks great. And they did change this a little bit from the manga. Who cares, right? Like, this shot looks great. This looks like it could go on a poster if it was in, like, pure HD and stuff. We got Night Ice Quirk. Uh-oh. What's that? Uh-oh. Some teasing. What's that going to be all about? You guys don't know. Why do I keep right-clicking? We don't We don't know when we'll find out the future. See, I thought this was going to be yellow. But it's kind of cool that it's purple. We got Night Ice Quirk going off. Some action between these two. I really don't want to get too much into what's going on between these two. But as you can see here, much like how Gran Torino was testing Deku when they first met, Night Eye here is going to be trying to have Deku grab something out of his hand. And, oh, it is going to be difficult. And that tells you a lot about Night Eye. That right now, Deku, in his full cowling, is trying to grab this. This is beautiful. Is trying to grab this and cannot do it. He can't do it. Because this guy is uh, keeping him from doing it. So, Night Eye is going to be a very important person as far as we're going forward in this arc. You can see that you know, he, has some, he definitely has some involvement with All Might. I don't want to... I mean, I, I feel like we already know that. I, I'm not going to talk about it. I feel we, we already know what their link uh, between the two of them is. Let's ooh, let's not even get into what this scene is. Why is Twice clenching his butt? Let's not even get into this scene yet. Uh, so Night Eye is going to be very important for this season. And he's pretty much going to be... He's going to be training up Deku, right? He's going to be Deku's mentor for this season. We do know that we're going into the internship arcs. Um, Deku's going to have to internship somewhere. So here we're seeing in the trailer, they're pretty much just... Showing us he's going to be intern shitting, intern shitty. What is that word? I keep making a word up. Intern shipping at Night Eye's office along with Mirio. So that's how these two are going to be. That's why they're on the poster. Here. That's how these two are going to be, uh, you know, related to each other in this season. So here we have the true meat of this season. Ah, uh, Magnet. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> so we have the League of Villains and Chisaki meeting for the first time, right? Twice has brought Chisaki as pretty much, hey, we're looking for new members here. We're looking to recruit. And then, I mean, there's a meeting here. And this, if the episode would have literally gone on at the end of the season. Oh, something happens that Magnet really didn't like, huh? If the season would have gone on literally another five minutes, we would have gotten this crazy scene between these characters because stuff really goes down here. So look forward to this being one of the first scenes that we get after uh, whatever non-recap episode there is. Yeah, Chisaki here. See, uh, once again, I don't like that they didn't fix... I don't like that the mask doesn't cover the sides of the face and the hairline is the same, but I guess this is the Chisaki design that we're going with this season. I, I, I don't know. He looks big. I, I don't know. There, there's definitely something lost on the Chisaki's uh, design to me. But to make up for it, at least at least we do get a new uh, Shigaraki design with the jacket. I mean, we did see that at the very end of... I keep right-clicking. At the very end of Season 3. But I really, really prefer Shigaraki with this jacket. Stop, stop talking. Stop talking over me. Uh, I, I don't want to get clamped. <laughs> well, I really do appreciate Shigaraki with the jacket. I think I do think it adds a whole extra layer of coolness to his character. Uh, he's kept the jacket on in the manga. It, it's kind of like a long trench coat hoodie kind of thing. It's all black. It's really, really cool. Uh, it looks like some parts are made of leather. Or maybe he has a leather jacket over it or something. I think it's really awesome. It, uh, it's better than him just walking around in like black high waters and a, a black dirty t-shirt. It's some black Air Force One, so you know you can't trust them. Like th that, th it's a meme about Air Force Ones. You can't trust people who wear black Air Force Ones, you know, if, especially if they're a dirty pair of black Air Force Ones. Shigaraki definitely has like the dirtiest pair of black Air Force Ones ever that he just partially destroyed and decayed and just has them looking disgusting. So you absolutely cannot trust Shigaraki because he got them crusty Air Forces on, <laughs> much like Draymond Green who counts with his toes. So we're here. Trying to save Eri. That's the main thing of this arc, right? Like, Deku is here. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, it's, oh, that's the thumbnail right there, folks. Deku is trying to protect this poor girl who's going through Lord knows a lot, right? There's a lot going... Oh, I remember this screen. This is actually what I used for my Eri. Um, funny enough, this is what I used for in the manga 
we can get a good comparison here. Look, this is what I used for my Aerie stick figure when I was making manga videos for. That's cool. That translates really well. Some of the shading is lost. Uh, looks a little more, you know, starving, <laughs> actually, in the manga, which is terrible. But, yeah, that there's Aerie. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, so this is the goal here, right? This child is going through a really cruel experience. And it's definitely, I mean, no one should be going through such a cruel experience, but it's just way too young to be going through such a thing. And it's going through something really that I wouldn't even wish on my worst enemy, right? So let's not even like really go into it. And Deku's not having it. And look, Mirio sees it too. That's also going in the thumbnail, I think. Mirio's like, oh yeah, this is a problem. There's something dark. All right, look, we got Nedure. There's something dark going on here. So we're definitely gonna see Deku. You see that face, Deku's not backing down. Deku's going to get real stubborn this season about what he's going to want to do uh, regarding saving this girl. So we see Deku with his mask on for one of the first times that we've ever seen it. So that's really cool, right? His hair sticks out the back. And this is one of the only shots in the manga where I ever thought that it looked really cool that Deku had his mask on. But we have Mirio, who's also going to take notice, right? Mirio's going to... He sees that there's something dark going on here. There's something wrong going on here. And he's going to have to step in and be just as much of a hero, if not more of a hero, than Deku. Keep in mind that for this season especially for the first half or the first big like two-thirds of the season mirio is just as much of a main character as deku is right these two characters there's a lot of parallels between them you'll see exactly why uh they have the same birthday they both are sort of uh related to all not related to all might but you know relate linked to all might in this weird way um and you know they're both working at uh working at uh, night eyes agency they're both going to be patrolling together you see them both on the poster they're doing everything they can to let you know that Mirio and Deku are the two main characters of this upcoming arc, right? This Aerie is obviously the goal here. She's the person that they're here to save. You can see that she grabs on the Deku and is pretty much like, please, play, hey, save me. And Deku's like, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely what it's what uh, what's going to go down here. So these two are pretty much the main driving force in this season. But also we have supporting characters, right? Like we have the big three. Look at that. Oh, Tamaki. Oh, Deku. That's fire. Ah, uh, see, that's too big for the thumbnail, though. Um, we have... Wow, Nejire. We have Nejire <laughs> using her spiraling energy, which is looking good in the in the anime because I didn't know how they were going to animate this. It kind of looks a little bit like a, a David Productions kind of kind of stand aura. That's cool. And we have Tamaki using his quirk manifest, which yeah, lets him pretty much eat something. Uh, I think I've already discussed these three. If you don't know what their three quirks do, I've discussed them. I, I didn't know Tamaki has a little faceplate there that kind of looks like Deku's on his chest. Um, I've discussed them already in the Big Three Explained. Uh, he's pretty much using, he ate some takoyaki or some, some, some octopus, and he's pretty much able to turn his body into the things that he's eaten. So he's using uh, octopus fingers to kind of whip up some enemies. So we got the Big Three, Mirio, Nejire, uh, Tamaki or Sun Eater, which is what I know him as, because that's what I, that, that's the coolest name out of most of the heroes. We got Deku. Oh, Deku's not having it. Deku's not having it. And then we cut back to this. This is what I like. We cut back to this conversation between All Might and Deku. And this is a dark look at there is dark undertones in this season of my hero. Look at All Might. The hair covers his face, right? Because this is, you know, we come to him with his back turned. Deku looks fearful. Deku has, like, Deku's terrified. Remember from the very beginning of the trailer, right? M remember that this is the context. We're starting off, the, uh, the, the trailer starts off at the end of Season 3. This is what All Might's been brought to, right? All Might has gone from this big, like, brave hero to this. A dude in a jumpsuit. And Deku is seeing it. Deku is seeing what's happened to All Might. He's ran here to talk to him. They have something that they have to discuss, right? And, and that really is the reason for the dark undertone of this, uh, well, the dark overtone of this conversation, right? But the dark undertone is, look, All Might, is, it's, he's not who he used to be anymore. And you, it's time for you to step up, Deku. So here, back at 46 seconds, we have All Might. It's, it's like, enough is enough, Midoriya. You know, it's time. It's this this crying and all this stuff. You're coming to me to cry and whine about this or whatever. Like you're you're worried about all this stuff. It's time for you to step up. And All Might is very much going to turn here. Look at that. Oh, we haven't even gotten to the meat, the meat, the meat of this trailer, which is Kirishima and all the different hero stuff going on. But we have All Might turning around and pretty much it's it's mirrors the first season, right? Where All Might 
has his hand raised and he tells Deku, you can be a hero. But this time, Deku is standing up and it, there's a very, you know, it's, it's different, right? It's more this time. Now Deku has to step up because there is no All Might anymore, right? So this conversation that they have here, it's going to be very interesting to listen to. Uh, definitely look forward to it. Uh, look forward for it, at least when we are getting into the season. I believe this this conversation does happen a little earlier into the season, so do look forward to it. it this is rather important for Deku's overall character arc that we are going to be seeing in this season. It's one of my favorite character arcs for him, as far as what we've gotten arc by arc in this season, uh, because it definitely is Deku dealing with a sort of feeling of feeling inadequate, right? Like, there's there's definitely a sort of inadequacy that he's dealing with in this season, uh, when compared to some of his peers, when compared to, uh, to All Might and seeing that he has to step up. So having to see him step up and where that's going to take him in the future uh, is, is going to be really interesting. So there we have these two talking. Now... We have Night Eye. Once again, look at that. The shading looks great. The lines are great. It just looks like a premium scene, right? It's just a quick little cut. We got my boy Fat Gum, which thankfully I now have some animation assets to use for Fat Gum so I can put him in videos because I I have been looking for some Fat Gum assets. So Fat Gum here is taking in these villains. We're really not going to get too deep into what's going on with him. But, you know, as we can see, we are going to get this scene. Oh, I remember where that scene is probably from now. We are going to get an episode or something with Kirishima and Fat Gum. Because this is where Kirishima here, our buddy, that's why they're showing him. Ah, oh, see, this is great. We're going to get a scene where Kirishima and Fakum, or at least an episode, are patrolling the town and taking on these villains. So some of these villains run into Fakum, and Kirishima has a run-in with a certain villain in an alleyway. And you can see he is ready. Oh, I, I see. What I really like about this new outfit is those black sleeves. Those black sleeves and the mask and everything really bring everything together, I think. I think before, with just the bare sleeves, it looked kind of weird. But now, with the big black sleeves, I think it looks really cool. I, I really like this about Kirishima's outfit. Kirishima's going to get a major major focus in this season uh in, in a really big way he's gonna have a really big moment he's gonna have two really big moments really um but one really really big moment and one moment that's just gonna really set up the theme of this arc some of the stuff that we're gonna be seeing uh and yeah it, for me I, I was really glad uh glad when i saw that kirishima was coming along on the mission for this arc and being included in the main group with uh deku we have ochako here this makes me wonder Ooh, you know what? I never really realized this. This makes me wonder if the Chisaki arc, if this raid, a lot of it is going to be happening at night. Because I always saw this as like a daytime battle, right? But these two being here, I'm wondering if this is actually from the hideout raid. By the way, these are great shots for both of them. Speaking of great shots, oh my god. Uh, these two here are also coming along in the mission. So we're pretty much seeing... All the people grouped together. We have Deku, Night Eye, Fat Gum, Kirishima, Ochako, uh, Ochako, Suyu. Everyone's grouping up, and this, once again, is the goal. To save this poor girl from those clutches. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Chisaki looks great here. Chisaki looks great in this scene. All right, wait, I have a little more faith. Chisaki looks fantastic in this scene. This looks like pretty much what, we're, like, what we've been asking for. It doesn't look like a big, fat guy. This also, I believe, is a... This is either a, a volume cover or a... Not a volume cover. This is probably just a cover from that week in Weekly Shonen Jump when Chisaki was. See, the mask looks huge here. It looks great. It looks really good here, too, by the way. Uh, poor Aerie, man. We gotta get her up out of here. Aerie's in a tough spot. We gotta save Aerie from this guy right here, this predator. <laughs> Using her for a quirk. Mirio. Look, and you see, like, this is very much the tone here. Like, it's raining... Oh, they added rain to this scene? Oh, boy. Oh, they're going to ham it up. They're going to go wild. This is very much the theme here, right? It's this... This guy is enemy number one. 1,000% for what he's doing to this poor girl. So all of these heroes are going to have to come together and make sure that this poor girl can smile again. Because this guy has completely taken away her ability to do that. And Mirio's going to have to put a lot on the line. Deku's going to have to put a lot on the line like you see here. We're breaking through... Ooh, I'm not even going to talk about what this is from. So this, oh, okay, I see what they're doing here. So I was actually seeing a thread about how they're going to do some of these scenes from the manga where Deku is breaking through walls or having, because Horikoshi does kind of change how he panels in this uh, in this arc, right? So it seems that they're going to be doing shots like that. I really don't, I actually don't think I like this, how they did that scene right there. I feel like that kind of took away some of the impact for it. But in the anime with the music and, and the, the sound effects and everything, I, I feel like that it's going to be cool. And they're probably going to speed it up a little bit. 
That's cool. That was also just an action shot for Deco in the trailer. That was really cool. That was My Hero Academia Season 4's trailer. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we, we pretty thoroughly broke that down. I have no idea how long this video was. Um, but hopefully you feel like we sufficiently broke down My Hero Academia Season 4's trailer. Uh, you know, I, I do have a video. I was trying to think, like, what I haven't explained uh, yet for this season. I do have a video explaining what you should expect for this season, when you can expect more news. I pretty much have tempered everyone's expectations for this season. Obviously, you can expect me to cover this season's, uh, you know, episodes. I, I don't know why I blanked out and forgot that word. You can obviously expect me to uh, cover this season's episodes weekly, even more than weekly. I'm probably going to be doing literally more than one video a week for this season. Uh, if you were around for my channel back during season three, that's also what I did. I covered, I did one episode about the season every week and then I'm, uh, well, about the episode every week and I made sure to do a couple of videos explaining, you know, various things that do get brought up in the various episodes. So if you think I'm uploading a lot now, just wait until season four happens. I'm literally already writing, editing and getting stuff ready for season four. So let, that lets you know how much I have planned for it, right? That I already have multiple videos that are just done, like ready kind of for the season to start. So, uh, we're definitely in grind mode here. This has been our breakdown of My Hero Academia Season 4's trailer. We've been here for a long time talking. I don't even want to look at how long this is. Ooh, 26 minutes. But, yeah, that's everything. I'll see you guys later. This has been Pineapple. Let's see if I can get myself in my own video for a second. Yep, that's me, and peace.